You all know the names, A Charlie Brown Christmas, Frosty the Snowman, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. We know what the classic Christmas shows on television have been over the years. They keep trotting them out year after year, but those are specials. Those are evergreens, literally and figuratively, because of the fact that we know them, we associate them with childhood, but that's not what we're talking about on this episode of Hot Media with Bob Mann. What I'm going to be talking about on this episode with my friend Len Klatt are all of the Christmas episodes of great television stories, uh, great television series, actually, because of the fact that um, what you want to do here is to take a look at a show that is on 22 episodes a year, that is in syndication, in perpetuity, or that is streaming. And what have they actually done for Christmas? So uh, joining me, and if you are a fan of this podcast, if you listen on any of the audio platforms or watch on YouTube, you know Len Klatt. Len is a television producer and media executive, and I would say a legit uh, TV historian. And certainly, Len, uh, you are the go-to person when it comes to talking about something like this. I rarely have the word legit used next to my name, but I'm happy to have it here. Well, I added it just to give you some legitimacy, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's talk about something we talked about just before we started recording a couple of minutes ago. And that is that you're not actually a fan of Christmas episodes. Explain that. Mostly because the Christmas episodes that I've seen of regular series, they kind of fall on three different plot lines. Uh, sometimes they do a riff on a Christmas carol. Sometimes they, uh, they borrow liberally from It's a Wonderful Life. Or it's about usually, okay, somebody didn't get the gift that they wanted. And it really, there's so many of them are the same over and over and over again, that it's been kind of hard for me when you, when you, when you approached this to me the other day, uh, to pick five episodes, I really had to scratch my head. And of course, because of my background, I kind of focus on more on the, the sitcom side of things. Um, but there aren't that many, Bob. Well, it is interesting, Len, because they do go off brand in many ways. People may change, uh, they, you know, may just fit a certain archetype just for that episode. But let me kick it off because I did pick my five. I cheated on one. Uh, I made it a variety show compilation, but I want to start off with something that is actually serious. All in the Family in the 1970s changed comedy forever. And of course, Norman Lear and, you know, you are a student of Norman Lear for sure and all the things that he did. And in 1976, the U.S. is out of the war in Vietnam, but there are still people who are in Canada who you would call them draft dodgers. That's the title of the episode. Uh, they were people who didn't want to go and serve in Vietnam. So to make a long story short, Archie invites over a gold-starved father, a friend of his whose son died in Vietnam, and Mike is surprised, Mike Stivick, meathead, is surprised by an old friend who reappears from Canada, who snuck into the United States. He's not allowed in because of the fact that he is a, quote, draft dodger. So um, I was wondering if maybe even a sitcom needs to have something semi-serious to have a legit Christmas theme. Oh, absolutely. And I, I know exactly the episode you're talking about. It was called Archie and the Draft Dodger. Um, it was a Christmas episode. They actually redid it maybe about two years ago when uh, Kimmel and uh, Norman Lear had been doing that live in front of a studio audience. And that was one of the, the scripts that they did. Oh, that was an episode they revised? Yes, for that they revised review. it a couple of years ago. And I have to tell you, I remember seeing the original, the All in the Family uh, version of it, and it was very jarring, and it was even more jarring, and also the writing wasn't as strong when I saw it on the Norman Lear Kimmel uh, reboot. Very interesting uh, how it didn't work. Now, All in the Family also did another Christmas episode where, if I remember correctly, Edith is 
found a lump on her breast and she's gone for tests and she's awaiting a test to hear if she's got breast cancer. So, so yeah, I mean, well, all in the family, of course, it didn't have to be Christmas. They would always bring in right. what was serious. And at the end of one episode, um, there is somebody who was blown up in his car outside. Um, I believe he was uh, an Israeli soldier who, for some reason, was visiting archery. And so you had these very, very serious uh, things that would occur. But you told me that one of the things that was most realistic, because sometimes the sitcoms go off brand for a uh, Christmas special, is in Everybody Loves Raymond. Talk a little bit about that, because that's a show where uh, <laughs> Christmas is just one of many days of the family fighting. And it is truly representative of what I think Christmas is these days when you gather with your family and friends. Uh, because the Raymond ones, and I think that they didn't miss a single season without doing a not only a, a Christmas episode, but a Thanksgiving episode. Because it was all about the family. And um, it was interesting because the, the Raymond Christmas episodes that I thought about, I really register with me. Uh, I believe there's one where... Deborah's parents are, she wants, De Deborah wants her parents to be included in the annual Barone Christmas photo. So there is a lot of drama and comedy coming out of uh, Doris Roberts in that particular episode. There's also another episode where they do a riff on, I've used the term riffs three times now, uh, where they do a an episode about writing the family Christmas newsletter. This is stuff that everybody can identify with. And that's why those episodes of Raymond, Christmas episodes, I really would look forward to them every year because they really resonate because they feel, they felt organic and real to me. I'm not going to make fun of Christmas newsletters because I have an old friend who moved to California who I know listens every week and he sends a Christmas newsletter every year. So uh, in Brody honor yesterday. of Steph and Brody I shall yesterday. not make fun of Christmas newsletters. I'm now, anti-newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> the other one, Len, that I wanted to mention to you that uh, when I put together my list was uh, great. Of course, it's not realistic, but it doesn't have to be because it's Seinfeld. And it's Seinfeld in the last season, which so many people remember justifiably as right. not a good season. And it's the only season without Larry David at the helm. And you have talked often on this podcast about the importance of a producer, a showrunner, a creator. But it's Festivus. The actual name of the episode is The Strike because there's always three or four things going on in a Seinfeld episode. And this is where Kramer goes on strike for the bagel store that he's been on strike from for over 12 years. But it is where uh, Frank Costanza reintroduces Festivus and a Festivus for the rest of us. And I, it is a classic. I think yeah. that Festivus is actually starting to work its way into people's uh, December 23rd vocabulary because of the fact that they're just wishing people a happy Festivus. <laughs> Back in the day, um, TV shows didn't like to do Christmas episodes. Uh, the only and, and you know the, the most celebrated one that still airs every year by CBS now in its colorized version is the I Love Lucy Christmas episode from 1956, which is basically a flashback uh, episode because they just showed clips of things that had happened in the series, largely because when I Love Lucy premiered in 1951. Not everybody in America had a TV set yet, so some of them missed some of the moments, the Vitamina Vegemin, the, the the birth of little Ricky. So that's why they kind of acquiesced and did that Christmas episode where they're decorating the tree and, oh, here's a memory and here's a memory. I mean, th not, that's not to say that there weren't some good ones that I remember from other shows. I think Mary Tyler Moore's Christmas episode, they only did one was very good, although they did kind of a separate uh, second one where it aired, I believe, I think, according to what I read, it aired in November, but Sue Ann Nivens was taping her Christmas special ahead of time, and it was a big argument amongst all the people in the cast. Once again, when there's conflict and there's funny conflict, it just feels more like Christmas to me. Let's just talk about um, one of the other ones that I like, but the, the episode 
on its own doesn't really stand as a classic, but it is Simpsons episode one of season one. And there's a dispute among TV historians, among Simpsons fans, as to whether or not that's truly the premiere because it was a Christmas special bouncing off of their identity on the Tracy Ullman show. But uh, it is called uh, Simpsons Roasting on an Open Fire, and it's where Homer goes to the dog track to try to make up for the loss of his Christmas bonus, and he ends up adopting the dog that finished last in the race. Mm -hmm. I guess, in a way, it may be the only great long-running series that uh, actually started with a Christmas episode. Yeah, that was and that was sheer timing. But yeah, I remember that episode very well, and actually, it's one of the shows that kind of hooked me into this. It was one of the episodes that kind of hooked me into The Simpsons later on. Uh, Would you go ahead, Lynn? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a couple of other isolated moments from series that I remember that were 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 nice, and it was set around the. There was an episode of Knots Landing, the soap opera. Uh, where the episode just before Christmas, they, they they had a Christmas motif. And one of the characters stole, had money problems and stole money from the Salvation Army kettle. Uh, but it was, but all the storylines were brought together in the last five minutes and were accompanied by a wonderfully done um, rendition of Have Yourself a Merry Christmas by Michelle Lee. And I still remember that. And it's actually on YouTube. And I've actually watched that little snippet. I try to watch that snippet every holiday season. You talked about the jarring parts of it. You know, Downton Abbey, when it aired in, would air in England before it would come here. It would come here in January of the year. And they held the last episode it was a tradition in England to run on Christmas Day right after the Queen's message. It's a big thing. It, in it, it, was a very, it was a very big thing. And people waited that. And one Christmas, uh, Downton Abbey had a marvelous ending to the, I think it was the end of maybe season two, where Matthew Crawley proposes to Lady Mary out in the snow and it is wonderful and it was shot in front of the castle and only only to die the next Christmas. The <laughs> very well that's what happened. The very next Christmas, they didn't do a Christmas episode on Christmas Day. They had Matthew drive into a ditch and die. And then what that's because Dan Stevens wanted out of his contract, though, that was uh, apparently Julian Fellow said, oh, you want out? I'll make sure you're out. Yeah, but the timing of doing that after he first sees his newborn son uh, was, gee, well, it created quite the kerfuffle, if I remember correctly. Oh, you do remember correctly because there were things on Twitter when I used to actually still have a Twitter account, which um, had <laughs> so where I saw someone say, uh, you ruined my entire Christmas and New Year's. And, you know, it, it is interesting because even if you go back to MASH, producers uh, will say to a star who wants to leave, I forget who it was, but oh, we'll make sure you leave because you are not coming back when it doesn't work out. McLean Stevenson. Right, right. Yeah. The, suddenly they just get the message, and apparently the cast hadn't been told uh, he died. You know, he died in a helicopter. His character died in a helicopter accident. The, the, there is one, I mean, there is one show that I will um, involve myself with every Christmas and enjoy. And it, we're going back another medium, and we're going back several generations. One of my favorite things to do every Christmas is to dig up the old Jack Benny radio show Christmas episodes. There was always one every year where Jack was in a department store shopping. And then it was another year. There was another, there was always another episode where Jack was entertaining at home and guests. And it, they were as funny as can, be, as can be. And it goes back several generations, but they still work. One of the one of the actors on uh, on uh, on on our sitcom project, David Gregory, and I trade Jack Benny stories, and he's further away from that generation that enjoyed the Jack Benny Christmas shows than I did, and than I am. And they still resonate and are downright funny to this day. I don't want to be any. <laughs> Older than I already am because I'm approaching a very 
uh, major landmark birthday. But having said that, I kind of miss that I was born into a television generation and never got to experience theater of the mind. My mother and father would always tell me about sitting around the radio and you could still talk to people. You weren't focused and fixated on just staring at a screen and what they would have to do to carry across that message in audio. I I really, even though I hear old time radio and I have some collections of it, it's not the same as having experienced it. It was probably something great for that generation. Oh, I mean, you know, just the sound effects and and Mel Blanc doing the uh, the, the sound of, of Jack Benny's Maxwell car. <laughs> uh, you know, the C Sai C Sai Su. Yeah, um, I don't think you could do that today. Right? No, you can't. <laughs> I think but... that, that might not pass muster today. <laughs> I uh, agree. That would not be smart I, to do. Uh, I agree, but if you talk about something that I like to focus on. Every Christmas season, it's a couple of the Jack Benny Christmas shows. Let's just uh, talk about a couple of other things that I put in there. Uh, One of my favorites is a Ted Lasso Christmas special. Uh, Not a special, an episode, and and actually dropped on Netflix over the summer. Sometimes Christmas can work well outside of the immediate Christmas season. Um, As a matter of fact, if you look at the Hallmark Channel, um, if, uh, I go up to my mother-in-law's, I can see a Hallmark Christmas movie in July because they just run them constantly. They never stop. Well, well, but well, this was Ted Lasso being alone and having to deal with his divorce and not seeing his son. It's Wonderful Life, by the way, the movie, I mean, getting off TV or just a bit that was released originally in August. Might have had something to do with its box office initially. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But listen, I mean, you know, it, yes, it does get more intense as the Christmas date becomes more real, but it wouldn't be as ingrained in all of us if it weren't something that we just have an automatic association and memory with. Uh, so that Ted Lasso episode was great. And here's where I'm cheating. Saturday Night Live, the compilation of all of their best bits. Although I really wish Lauren Michaels would just take a trip down to the edit suite and maybe put in some new stuff because it's exactly the same things every single year. Uh, some of them you can't take out. You know, you can't take out Pete Schwetty, Um, And there's a lot of things you can't take out. But some things have become hopelessly dated, etc. cetera. So uh, that would be I that would be that. my fifth. But but, you know, Len, you and I are really with the exception of having thrown in one thing, uh, one reference to Downton Abbey and maybe one other. We really aren't focusing too much on dramas at Christmas. Is that because they're so melodramatic or is that just because we're drawn more to the sitcom genre? I think when I, well, well, personally I'm drawn more to the sitcom genre, but um, I, I I think that the, um, the melodramatic aspect, what you're talking about is, is always there anyway with the drama. So these, these Christmas episodes don't stick out as, as, as often as they do with regard to when it's a Christmas episode of a, of a sitcom, you know, you, but think about the Waltons, the Waltons originally started as a Christmas movie. It was called the homecoming and that spurred the series, but effectively that Christmas movie was really a pilot for the Waltons. Just before we wrap this up, I started out the episode by talking about um, these uh, uh, Christmas specials that we all know, Frosty and Rudolph and all the rest. Do you have a favorite there, or is that just not your thing? Charlie Brown Christmas, I, I mean, I will um, I will gravitate to, not every year, every other year. Um, that, that's pretty much it. I, I, I was never, even when I was a kid, and they would rerun those Rankin Bass um cartoons i was never a huge fan of those um th- there was one good i remember and i don't believe it gets played very often but i thought it was quite good and it was very musical as well it was almost like a musical comedy but it was a cartoon it was uh, mr magoo's christmas carol and that was well done 
Yeah, and you know, when it comes to Christmas movies, we could do a whole episode on that. Maybe I will uh, to fill up the rest of December. Thank you for doing this, Len. Um, you talked about the show that you're working on online right now. Uh, if you can just give uh, the audience an update on where that stands and where to find it. Well, we're done, and we actually uh, dropped the, the 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 last episode that we had shot on Zoom on Christmas Day last year. But the amazing thing about it is that we promote it every week and we get views every week from all across the world. And it, it is still new to some people. And we're just getting to the point where we're just going to keep promoting it, promoting it, promoting it till we get really noticed and we get the backing to shoot six to eight episodes in a way that is normally uh that would be normally produced aka not on zoom and uh because we knew in our, we know in our heart of hearts that if we if we had that we would get picked up very easily because we really really believe in our project and we get great notes we get great comments from listeners all the time well len um i'd like you to hang on there because i'd like to sign off on the uh on the um, video side here, and then I'll just rejoin you in our StreamYard um, software here right after this. But on the show, I'd just like to thank you so much for being here and talking about it and bringing us your love of television and uh, your expertise in television, uh, talking all about the uh, Christmas episodes. Thanks. I, lo I love doing this with you, Bob. And if you do do something on Christmas movies, uh, I got a whole well of those. Okay. All right. Well, I may be ca calling you again before the holiday here. So uh, hang on so. there. I'll, t I'll talk to you after um, I do the sign off here. Len Klott. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's it for this episode of Hot Media with Bob Mann. This is primarily an audio podcast on all of the major platforms. We urge you to listen and to subscribe. And occasionally, uh, as you're probably seeing right now, if you're on YouTube, uh, you know that we do a couple of the interviews uh, without edits and in their entirety. Uh, you know that I did an episode uh, on the air about dropping my uh, Twitter uh, account. So the best place to go to get more information and archives about the show is the website, which the video audience sees right now, www.bobmanhotmedia.com. And uh, also you can follow me on Instagram at bobman92. And uh, we hope that you join us every week, whether it's on audio or on video, to um, hear about the hottest content and controversies and issues in the media right here on Hot Media.